What's happening guys and welcome back to another episode of Ruse Reviews. Today we are chatting about Triple Helix by John Bing and Snake, produced by Toomey Magic. So let's get into this. So here we go guys, Triple Helix by Snake and Toomey Magic. Now what is Triple Helix? Well, Triple Helix is an effect in which you can produce multiple decks of cards, different coloured decks of cards, ending on a deck which you can then use in regular performance. Now. I first saw this effect way back in uh, February of 2019, if you can remember that. Do you remember 2019? Yeah, it was a good year, 2019. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, back at Blackpool of February 2019, um, I saw videos coming out of Snake performing this at the Ruskin. And um, yeah, it just blew my mind. I knew that whenever this would be released, way before all the stuff that you've probably read online already about this effect uh, had come out, I knew that I'd be picking this up straight away. Before any ad copies, before any uh, misconstrued thoughts of how gimmicks are made and ready to go and all this sort of stuff. We'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, I knew I'd get this effect. So. I don't really know where to start with this review because there's been a lot of bad press already that's sort of thrown this product in a lot of bad light. And it all stems from one review from what I can see. Um, but I wouldn't be reviewing anything on this channel if A, I wasn't gonna work it, B, I hadn't have worked it, and C, without showing you guys some sort of performance as and when I can. And I will show you me performing this in a little bit. I think the main issue was, when this product came out, there was a lot of backlash about the ad copy saying that gimmicks were ready to go out of the box but weren't performance ready out of the box. It might affect some people, but if you're a magician and you're upset about what you get in this package pertaining to what you can do and see on the camera, you, what you see in the trailer is what you can do with everything you get in the package. If you're upset by that because of the bare minimal, and I mean bare minimal setup that you have to do prior, uh, take a long, hard walk. So basically, I was away last week. I was up in Liverpool filming two projects for Copeland Coins. If you don't know what that is, watch this video up here. I'll tag it in a little card. Um, and we were up there for a week. Uh, the UK's in a national lockdown, so we had to travel and all, all that kind of stuff. But we were filming at a place called the Oracle Bar in Liverpool. If you haven't been, it's an amazing place. Uh, the apartment we were staying at behind, we were just sort of chilling out, me and my friend before shooting. And the director, who was also the owner of the Magical Bar, came into the apartment. I had the gimmick. And I'm going to show you the gimmick here. This is the gimmick. I had the gimmick set up on the table, uh, ready to go. I was just messing around with it beforehand. He saw the gimmick, didn't bat an eyelid, continued chatting, and I then proceeded to do Triple Helix, uh, to which he freaked out. And when I say freaked out, I mean I didn't do this in a virtual setting. I didn't do this at a table or a parlour show. I did this at a close-up, one-on-one with a guy. He could have been no further than about two feet away from me, maximum, and I performed it, he reacted, he loved it, and he went and bought it, uh, based on that performance alone. Now, I think the main thing about this is people were freaking out about, uh, sort of, how the gimmick looked, maybe, how it looked, like, in, in the preset for getting this to work. Um, if you are letting your spectators have the option and freedom to want to examine this deck of cards beforehand, look, I, I'm gonna bring them into frame now, okay? Now, admittedly, I wouldn't even let spectators get as close as I am to this camera, but I mean, I'm closer than a foot away from the camera, right? This is what it looks like in, in, um, in close-up situations. If you're afraid by this, if you're afraid by this, don't buy this effect. If you can't handle your spectators to make sure they don't examine this deck beforehand, then don't buy this effect. By the way, that's as visual as it gets. I don't know anything better. I don't want to bang on about other reviews and how much bad press this has got because I absolutely love this effect. So, what do you get when you buy Triple Helix? Well, you get a uh, rather lovely package. Uh, let's see if we can get that in focus. 
there it is, Triple Helix, a nice white box, uh, Triple Helix by John Bing and Snake, uh, produced by to me magic. Uh, now, I, I know of John, I don't know him that well. I see him on online forums occasionally. Snake, I'd never really heard of either. I believe he goes under another name on Facebook. But uh, the collaboration between these two clearly works in the context of this effect. I think the initial prototype that John went to, uh, I guess, Snake and Toomey Magic about uh, wasn't as in detail as the um, gimmick that you now get with the product. But what you do get if you want to produce and replicate what you see on camera, then you'll be happy with this product. I will touch on the setup in a second, but what you do get in the box are two gimmicks, one red and blue gimmick, and they are pre-prepared. Uh, they're not ready to perform out of the box, but they are good to go out of the box. And there's a few other things in the package as well. There's some bits that will make this effect a little bit easier to work. You also need your own box, a spare box, if you wanna do part of the setup for the gimmick. Um, I don't actually do that part of the setup. Uh, I think John even mentions that he didn't do this part of the setup, but if you want, if you have an old deck lying around, an old card box lying around, um, you will need to destroy that just to uh, make part of the gimmick. When I say destroy, um, that sounded a bit too harsh. Uh, you just have to get rid of a piece of it. Um, and yeah, and then you have to set up and gimmick your regular card box and that's it. You place the cards inside and you're good to go. All of that setup, all of it, including doing what I needed to with an old deck of cards, uh, old card box, sorry, and setting up the card box that I was using in performance, that took me less than five minutes. And the reset in performance now takes me less than five seconds. Uh, I will show you, I will prove this to you. I'll do a full performance and I'll show you in a second. But here's the gimmick, set up, boom, okay? There's number one, I can come up, boom. There's number two. If I wanna reset, there is my reset and I'm good to go, boom, okay? That's how quick it is. Stop listening to people saying that it will take ages. You can do that between tables. It takes no time at all. The gimmicks themselves, whilst well-constructed, could probably, and I'm sure they will over time, perish because the nature of, the, of how these gimmicks are made will uh, tend to go that way. Um, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I've paid what I feel is a decent price. I know I'll get a certain lifespan out of performances from it. Um, one thing I do wish is in the instructions, and we'll go into the instructions in a little bit, is that they teach you how to repair the gimmick. That's one thing that I wish they did have. Maybe they could film a separate video on that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the way the gimmicks are constructed, they will last you a while. Also maintain them in a good way. You know, don't just chuck them in your bag. One thing that I will note is that if I do carry this around in my jacket pocket uh, for performances, one, I would let it occupy one pocket space. I wouldn't have other things inside that pocket. And two, and if you have the gimmick, try this, Keep it facing uh, lip down, okay? So the opening of the box, mouth down in your pocket. That way you can take it out of your pocket, holding what you need to hold, without it sort of coming apart in your hands. Uh, it, will, it will happen very, very easily if you don't know how to hold and sort of uh, adjust yourself to this gimmick. Um, and on that note, once you do know how to adjust and hold to this gimmick, uh, you'll be fine with it. I'm gonna insert a performance now of me doing it, and in fact, you can see in that performance, I toss the box from hand to hand, and that's, you know, that's how much it holds still. I'm, I'm, I'm really not that fussed about bits coming apart because I've practiced with it. If you practice with a gimmick, you're fine, right? <laughs> so here is a performance of me performing uh, Triple Helix for my social media. What's happening, guys? So, most of you can probably see around you that on my Instagram, most of the things are coin magic. Uh, but I think it's an unwritten rule that as a magician, we kind of have to like card tricks as well. Uh, some magicians like myself prefer blue backed cards like these. Uh, other magicians prefer to have the option of uh, red backed cards. You have the choice of red or blue. Uh, some magicians prefer different brands of playing cards. These are bicycle cards, uh, but I myself prefer uh, these, Copag 310s. They're kind of funky, kind of different, and uh, got a unique back design. 
So that's it guys, that was the little performance that I did on my Instagram with Triple Helix. Uh, what I love about this also is that you have a choice of one or two changes. Uh, if you're really worried about how the box looks, then just do the second phase of the routine and just split the deck once, place the deck away and go into your performance. There is a bit which uh, in the instructions would leave your card box dirty, uh, but in the instructions, um, Patrick Kuhn goes into how he cleans up with that. He doesn't go into detail of how to make the gimmick or anything which would have been nice but he he does go into how he cleans up on that and i'm sure with a little thought you guys could come up with your own way as well um as i say i don't worry about that uh, i end on a uh, copad deck of cards um when i perform this to the owner of um, this oracle bar where we were filming um he i gave him the deck of cards and he took the cards out of the box he didn't even notice that the gimmick uh, was on the card box so i've got no worries about using the gimmick this way uh, simultaneously if i didn't have that gimmick on it will be no issue as well i just rotate my hand slightly from my left to my right at one point in the routine if you watch the performance and you have the gimmick, you'll know which point that would be. And I'll be fine. There's really, there's really nothing to worry about. Um, I think the main issue with this product came from all the back chat about the ad copy and all, and the, the sort of dis, dis, dispatch date and all this kind of stuff, which is fine, I get it. But if you want to perform the effect you see in the trailer and that you saw at Blackpool in 2019, then this gimmick will do it. The instructions are taught by Snake. Uh, John isn't on the instructions, it is just Snake, and he is uh, overdubbed. He's overdubbed in English. I believe he's Spanish or Portuguese, but no, Spanish, I believe. I, I wish in the, uh, in the tutorial that there was another camera angle. Uh, the way that the gimmicks are set up, it can get a little bit confusing, but if you follow along, you should keep in line with what's happening. You can always rewind a little bit. I followed along to a lot worse tutorials. But uh, yeah, the tutorial would indeed have benefited from a second camera angle. The angles on this as well, I mean, you're pretty much 180. If you want a bit more, just move your body slightly to the left, like I did in performance. That's it. Uh, you really don't have to worry about your angles too much. Just make sure nobody's over your shoulder, just like Jiminy Cricket or something, just peeking down over your shoulder. You're fine. So would I do this effect in a close-up situation? Yes, 100% I would, because I've done it already, and I know it works. Uh, would I do this effect over zoom camera? Yeah, sure, that's fine as well. But, you know, this is a, a, a great way to get into any routine at a table, and, um, you know, just coming out, color changing deck, changing the brand of a deck, splitting a deck into two, whether it's from red to blue, or blue to red, or just blue to blue, or red to red. If you split a deck in two, that's super visual, man, and it doesn't get more visual than this. I remember seeing the initial video at Blackpool and just being like, that's impossible. Really thought that was impossible, man. To then take out a deck of cards at the end as well, which is normal and you can then use, uh, that's, that's a great, great opener. I think that this effect in and of itself is stunning and well worth the price point that it's out at. Uh, I really hope that uh, the guys at Toomey Magic and maybe Snake or John will make an upload video about how to sort of create your own gimmicks or repair the gimmicks that you already have. Um, I sort of have an idea and you could probably figure it out yourself, but it would be nice to show a step-by-step -step as well. And that's it guys. I don't get paid to do these reviews. I don't get any ad revenue from uh, this channel. I'm under a thousand subscribers. I don't make any money from this channel. Every, uh, the majority of the effects, maybe 96% of the effects that I review on this channel, I pay for out of my own money. Um, so I was happy to pay for this. And would I do it again? If this ran out in about a thousand, two thousand performances time, however long it takes for these gimmicks to run out, would I pay 40 pounds again? Yes. Yes, I would, because I know it would be great in a close-up situation and indeed any performance situation. And that was it. That was Triple Helix by John Bing and Snake produced by Toomey Magic. And I will see you all very, very soon.